Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Read Z. So today we're going to be talking about ebook distribution options. The rise of the ebook format has opened up a ton of new avenues for authors, especially indie authors, because the production costs of an ebook are so low, you don't have to pay to print the book. They're an ideal format for indie authors, and a lot of indie authors have gathered a lot of success by publishing ebooks, whether exclusively or alongside a print version. In fact, as an indie author, you should expect the majority of your sales and therefore the majority of your revenue to come from ebooks. But there's also a lot to say and learn and know about ebook distribution. There's a whole network of ebook distribution channels and different tools that you can use when distributing your ebook, so that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So before I get into different tools, I wanted to cover a couple related topics, starting with file formats. Which file format do you need if you're publishing an ebook? There are two main ebook file formats, EPUB and Mobi. Mobi is used exclusively by Amazon and EPUB is used by everywhere else. Now it used to be that you needed to upload a Mobi file to Amazon and you'd upload an EPUB everywhere else. Now when you upload to Amazon, you just upload an EPUB and they automatically convert it to a Mobi file. So basically what you need is an EPUB file if you're not sure how to get one. Um, our tool, the Reads Ebook Editor, it's free and it exports to EPUB. The next question I wanted to touch on is ISBNs. Do you need an ISBN? So most ebook publishing platforms will provide an ISBN for free, but you can still choose to purchase them yourself. The benefit is that you'll be listed as the publishing company rather than whichever platform you're choosing to publish through. So you don't need to buy an ISBN, but you can if you want to. But do know that every version of your book needs its own ISBN. So if you're publishing a paperback and an ebook, they both need their own unique ISBN. So if you want to buy an ISBN, you can buy them in the US at Boker, in the UK at Nielsen, and in Canada they're free and available through the Canadian ISBN service system. You'll also need to upload your cover. It's really important when you're working with your designer on the cover that you make sure the cover looks good as a thumbnail and looks good in black and white. You know, if someone is buying a print version of a book in a store, they're gonna see the beautiful hardback cover, but it's a little different if someone is looking at an ebook store, they're only gonna see the thumbnails and they might appear in black and white, so you want your cover to be eye-catching, even in a really small size. It's also important that you upload a cover in the correct format and dimensions, so you'll want to check the specifications of the platforms that you're uploading to, and check in with your designer about this to make sure that they're providing a cover that's in the correct dimensions. This will just ensure that everything looks the way it's meant to look, once you upload it. Now let's cover kind of the age-old question, or it's not the age-old question, the relatively recent question, Amazon versus going wide. So when you're distributing an ebook, you kind of have two main options. You can be exclusive to Amazon by opting into KDP Select, or you can choose to go wide. Going wide means that you can distribute to everyone. The benefit of being Amazon exclusive is that you'll get a bunch of extra promotional tools available through Amazon. Tools that Amazon only offers to KDP Select authors. For some authors, these tools can be a huge benefit and might outweigh the drawback of being exclusive to Amazon. For other authors, they might not be worth it at all. There is no right or wrong answer. It just depends on your book. We have a video detailing all of the features of KDP Select so you can make a more informed decision. I'll leave a link to that video just to keep this one more concise. I won't go into all of it now. But, but the biggest factor to talk about, because it's going to be the biggest factor in your decision, is Kindle Unlimited. In some genres, a vast majority of the readership are only reachable through Kindle Unlimited. Meaning, if you're not exclusive to Amazon and you don't have access to Kindle Unlimited, you're not going to be able to reach a huge pool of potential readers. It's also important to keep in mind that Kindle Unlimited rankings contribute to rankings on the paid Amazon store. So if you're not using Kindle Unlimited, it's going to be really hard to compete with all the books in your category that are on Kindle Unlimited. Go to Amazon, go to your chosen genre, and figure out how many of the top 100 books are in Kindle Unlimited. If that percentage is high, then you probably want to enroll in KDP Select. If it's fairly low, then going wide might be the better option. Now the case for going wide is fairly self-explanatory, but you can distribute your book wherever you want. 
Although in the US, Amazon controls 80% of the ebook market, which is huge, their market share isn't so dramatic in other countries. In Canada, Kobo alone controls 25%. In Germany, Tolino has the same market share as Amazon. So if most of your audience is in the US, then most of your audience is reachable through Amazon. But in other countries, this isn't necessarily the case. Going wide means you have the potential to reach all these other readers. Building a presence on multiple smaller retailers can also sometimes be easier than trying to compete on the Amazon store, which is pretty oversaturated since everyone is distributing there. The important thing is that whichever strategy you choose, you do need to stick with it. Even though a KDP select term is only 90 days, it takes a lot longer than 90 days to become successful on any given strategy. You can't really try to dip into both strategies. It might seem tempting to do a KDP select term for 90 days, take advantage of all our promotional tools, then go wide for a bit, have access to this wider audience, but it doesn't really work like that. Both strategies take years of commitment to become successful. So when you pick one, you want to commit to it. Of course, if you start using KDP Select and you realize it really doesn't work for you, you can opt out. It's not a forever choice, but ultimately you want to pick a strategy and stick with it. So now let's talk about ebook publishing platforms and retailers. If you're going wide, the main retailers that you'll be distributing through are Amazon, Apple Books, Kobo, Google Play, and Barnes and Nobles, as well as other smaller retailers. You can reach either of these stores directly or you can use an aggregator. Going direct to each of these platforms gives you the highest royalties, but it can also be kind of a hassle. You'll need to upload all of your files individually and set up all the metadata individually on every single platform. At first this might not seem like a big deal, like okay, I'll go to each platform and upload all my files individually, so what? But it can actually become pretty inconvenient in the long run. Every time you want to change something in your book's metadata, you have to go change it on every single platform. You'll be getting sales reports from different platforms at different times, so it can be really hard to keep track of your overall sales. And this hassle will only increase the more retailers you want to reach. If you're only interested in distributing through a couple of the main retailers, maybe it's worth it. But if you want to reach a lot of smaller distribution channels, it can become quite a hassle. Luckily, there's a pretty nifty solution to this problem, and it's what's called an aggregator. An aggregator allows you to distribute your ebook to multiple stores through a single central platform, and they consolidate your metadata and your sales reports across all retailers into one place. In exchange, they'll either take a cut of your royalties or an upfront fee. Flat fee aggregators include BookBaby, eBook Partnership, and Publish Drive. Royalty share aggregators include Draft2Digital, StreetLib, Smashwords, and Jinji. So let's take a look at some of these different aggregators. The first one is Draft2Digital. If you want to learn more about Draft2Digital, we actually, actually did an interview with the folks from Draft2Digital where we talk about some of their different features and tools. So if you want to learn more about that platform, I'll leave a link to that in the cards. Draft2Digital is the main aggregator service that we recommend. They are favored by most indie authors and they've gotten a lot of praise for their interface and their array of free tools. Their automated back matter tool is especially useful if you're writing a series. Basically, every time you publish a new ebook through Draft to Digital, they'll automatically add it to the also buy section of your other book's back matter on every store with the relevant link. Their universal book link is also really useful. It allows authors to generate a link that redirects a reader automatically to their preferred retailer and country store. They distribute to all major ebook retailers and libraries except except for Google Play. Next up is Smashwords. They were the first aggregator on the market and the market leader until draft to digital came along. Their royalties and distribution options are similar to draft to digital but their interface and tools are less user-friendly. Next up is StreetLib. They're an international distributor with a large international presence, especially in Latin America and Europe. So if you have a large audience in those regions, they're a good one to check out. They also distribute to all major retailers except for Google Play. You'll notice a running theme here with that one. Jinji is a German distributor. Their interface isn't ideal um, and they can be pretty slow in updating your metadata and removing old titles, but they can open you up to new international distribution options. Publish Drive is the newest aggregator on the market. They distribute to all major stores, including Google Play, and because they specialize in international distribution, they can open you up to a lot of new distribution channels. They don't offer a free ISBN. Instead, they have their own book identification system called the PUI, 
but it is recognized by all of the channels that they distribute to. Book Baby is kind of an all-in-one author service, but they do also have an aggregator. They can reach all major stores except for Google Play, and they're also the only aggregator that gives you the option to enroll in KDP Select through them though it doesn't really make any sense as to why you would do that because then you're just paying an aggregator service to be exclusive to Amazon. So if you want to be exclusive to Amazon, just do that directly through Amazon. But they do offer that as a tool if for some reason you would like to use it. And finally is ebook partnership. They're a lesser known UK aggregator that operates on the same model as Book Baby, but cheaper and less well known. So which one should you use? The answer is actually more than one. That's right. We're going to start aggregating aggregators. Luckily for you guys, we've taken the time to cross-reference all these different services and created a spreadsheet that breaks down the distribution channels across all these aggregators. By combining draft to digital Publish Drive, and StreetLib, you can reach hundreds of retailers all across the world, but you don't want duplicate titles popping up on every store. So I'll leave a link to that spreadsheet in the description. So across aggregators, you can make sure you're not listing the same title multiple times. So that's an introduction to ebook distribution. I know there was a lot of information in this video, but I'm going to leave a bunch of relevant links in the description that expand on or review the information in this video because I do know it's a lot to take in and it can seem kind of technical. So I'll leave a blog post below if you want to review the different aggregator services, some other videos we've done on KDP Select and their different um, tools, and of course that spreadsheet cross-referencing all the different aggregators. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time!